In this video, we're going to describe the Gram-Schmidt process. Here, what we're going to do is start with an inner product space V. And let's say that we have a basis for this inner product space. Inner product spaces are all vector spaces, so they have a basis. And we're going to take this basis and turn it into an orthonormal basis. And that turns out to be a very useful thing to do for many applications. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this basis B and we're going to uh, turn it into an orthonormal basis. Again, remember orthonormal means orthogonal plus all the vectors have unit length. Orthogonal means that if we take any pair of vectors in this basis, their inner product will be zero. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, so in general, what we're going to do in uh, R2, for example, if I wanted to draw an orthogonal basis in R2, we could draw our axes here. Any uh, orthonormal basis, I should say, uh, is going to have some basis vector here. And then at a right angle, uh, we're going to have another basis vector there. So we can call this E1 and E2, where those are orthogonal, where they meet at a right angle. Because it turns out in R2 and R3, when at least in Rn, when we work with the inner product being the dot product, uh, two vectors are going to be orthogonal. They'll meet at a right angle, if and only if their inner product is zero. So that's why we use the word orthogonal in general when describing um, two vectors having a, a zero uh, inner product. So again, we're gonna take this basis B and we're gonna turn it into an orthonormal basis. The hard part of this is turning it into an orthogonal basis because if we were to have an orthogonal basis, say we have these two vectors, uh, V1 and V2, if they meet at a right angle, all we have to do is just scale them. And that's just a matter of multiplying by a real number. Uh, and then that turns into an orthonormal basis. So the orthogonality part is the hard part, and that's the part that we'll concentrate on. So I wanna start with a basis, turn it into an orthonormal basis, and there's a algorithm for that called the Gram-Schmidt process, dating back to the 1930s, although this process was known even uh, as, long, as long ago as the late 1700s, early 1800s. So uh, we're gonna start by letting U1 be the vector v1. So v's are the vectors that we're starting with in our basis. u's are going to be the orthogonal vectors. And then we'll normalize all those vectors at the very end. So uh, our second vector, u2, is going to end up being v2 minus the projection of v2 under u1. And so I want to describe geometrically what the projection is and why this is a useful thing for us. Uh, I'm going to again stick with R2 because it's what I can draw, uh, but also it makes, I think, the most sense. And so we're going to take uh, some vector. Uh, so in this case, we have V2 and U1. So let's say we have uh, uh, V2 and U1. And what I want to do is I want to think about what's the orthogonal projection uh, of V2 under U1. And basically, what it means is Imagine all of the lines that are going to be orthogonal to U1. So you can think of all these lines that are going to be orthogonal uh, to the vector. It doesn't matter if they intersect the vector or not. And imagine the one line that's going to be orthogonal to U1 that goes through the tip of V2. It's going to look something like that. In fact, let me draw that in green. So it's going to be orthogonal to U1, but it's going to travel through uh, this vector V2. And what we're going to do is if you think about the shadow, so if you're standing over here, the shadow and shining, you have a flashlight, the shadow that this vector V2 would make on U1, uh, it would make this vector look a little bit different. It would make it look something like, uh, something like this. So we would take, let me draw this a little bigger. So it would look something like this, that would be the shadow that V2 would make on that vector U1. And that shadow is the projection. Okay, so that shadow is the projection of V2 onto U1. And this orthogonality here, the fact that this line is orthogonal to that vector is exactly what's going to help us build this orthogonal basis. Okay, because if we take, um, just, to, uh, just to make this perfectly salient here, um, let me get rid of all the green parts that aren't the triangle so that we can kind of see what's going on. Um, I ruined our axes, but oh well, I don't care. And uh, what I want to do is I want to think about this vector. 
Um, so if this is the projection, um, let's think about this vector, this green vector here, I'm gonna call this say W. And if we think about the way that vector addition works, if I were to add two vectors, so if I were to take the projection of V2 onto U1 and add to it the vector W, this would give us the vector V2. The reason for that is that the way that vector addition works in R2 and R3 is you can think of vector addition as a set of instructions saying, first travel along this vector and then travel along that vector. And you end up, if you start at the origin, you end up over here, right? If you travel both of those vectors in that order, actually the order doesn't matter, but as long as you travel both of those vectors, you end up there. That's the same as traveling along the vector V2. So that's why we think of the vector V2 as the sum of these two vectors. And if you think about what W is then, this tells you that W is gonna be V2 minus the projection of V2 onto U1. Okay, and that's exactly uh, going to be orthogonal to U1 by design because of the definition of the projection. But also, that's exactly what this is, right? And so this vector W that we're constructing is uh, going to be orthogonal to the vector U1 that we're starting with because of how projections work. And so that's basically the process. I should also mention, and this will be very useful for us, that just in general, if you have the projection of a vector v onto a vector u, this is going to be the inner product of u and v divided by the inner product of u and u times the vector u. Okay, so times uh, that vector u. So it's going to be a scaled version of this vector, which is why that purple vector is right on top of u1, right? It's scaled, it's on that same, uh, it's on that uh, same line through the origin, those two vectors. Um, but this is how this works in general. And then you just kind of rinse and repeat this process. U3 is going to be the vector V3. You want it to be orthogonal now to U2 and U1. So you're going to subtract uh, the projection of V3 onto U1. That makes it orthogonal with U1 based on this process. Minus, you'll also subtract the projection of V3 onto U2. And that makes it orthogonal with U2. Okay, so if you uh, keep doing that, then you can build up a... Uh, bigger and bigger list of orthogonal vectors. And so at the very end, you'd end up with u sub n. So after however many steps, you'd end up with u sub n is v sub n minus the projection of v sub n uh, on u1 minus all these, uh, minus the projection of v sub n on u sub n minus one. And so this is exactly uh, the Gram-Schmidt process. Okay, that's the Gram-Schmidt algorithm is computing that set of vectors. And then once you have the orthogonal vectors, what you do is you just take each of these and then divide by their length. So you would take U1 um, divided by the length of U1 and E2 would be U2 divided by the length of U2 and so on. Okay, so En would be uh, Un over the length of Un. And then this set of vectors, E1 to En, is the set that we're looking with. That's the orthonormal set. So let's do an example where we uh, actually have to compute this. And so I want to start by looking at the set. Um, so let's do, uh, let's work with this basis. So it's going to be the basis 1, 2, 3, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1 um, as a basis uh, for uh, R3. Um, with the standard inner product with the dot product. Okay, so the dot product is our inner product in R3. Um, in this example, you can have many dot products in R3, so you have to specify which inner product you're working with. And in this case, we're just working with the standard dot product, and that's going to generally be the case when we work over R2 or R3. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this process and find these vectors. And the first part is super easy. U1 is 1, 2, 3, and we're done. Or a third of the way home. U2 is going to be the vector V2 minus the projection of V2 onto U1. So let's compute what that is. Um, and U3 is going to be V3 minus the projection of V3 onto U1 minus the projection of V3 onto U2. 
notice that because of this, you have to kind of recursively build this set of orthogonal vectors. So you have to do this step by step. So there's no way that you can do this ahead of time. You need to figure out what's U2 in order to figure out what's U3 and so on. So there's this kind of recursion that's built in. So what we need to do is figure out uh, first what's U2, and then we can use that to figure out U3. So U2 is going to be the vector V2, uh, which is 1, 0, 1, minus the projection of V2 onto U1. So it's going to be minus um, the dot product of the two vectors. Okay, so minus the dot product of the two vectors. So 1, 0, 1 dotted with 1, 2, 3, divided by 1, 2, 3 dotted with itself times u1, which is 1, 2, 3. Okay, so altogether, that's going to end up being uh, 1, 0, 1 minus, let's see, the dot product. Remember that you multiply the corresponding entries, and then you add up the products that you have. So here, we're going to have 1 times 1 plus 0 plus 3. Um, so that's going to be four, oops, four. And then in the denominator, you have one plus four plus nine, so it'll be 14. That's all times the vector one, two, three. This is two sevenths, so four fourteenths is two sevenths. So this is going to be the vector one, zero, one minus uh, two sevenths. So we're going to end up with two sevenths. Uh, four sevenths and six over seven, six sevenths. And then when we subtract these, we're going to end up with one minus two sevenths is five sevenths. Zero minus four sevenths is minus four sevenths. One minus six sevenths is one seventh. And so that is the vector u2. Okay, so that's our vector u2 that we'll have. And then we're going to do this again. So uh, let me copy and paste this here. So U3, I'll just recopy it, I guess. U3 is going to be V3, which is the vector 1, negative 1, 1, minus, let me make sure that that's right. Yeah, 1, negative 1, 1, minus the projection of V3 onto U1. So what that's going to be is minus uh, the projection of V3 is going to be the inner product of V3. So 1, negative 1, 1, dotted with U1. Uh, which was the vector one, two, three, divided by the vector one, two, three, dotted with itself, which is just the length or the norm of the vector squared times the vector one, two, three. Okay, so we'll figure out what that is in a second. Uh, and then we're also going to do this uh, projection of V3 onto U2. So we're going to take uh, V3, which is again one, negative one, one dotted with u2, which we just computed to be 5 sevenths, negative 4 sevenths, 1 seventh, divided by this vector 5 sevenths, 4 sevenths, negative, uh, negative 4 sevenths, 1 seventh, dotted with itself, negative 4 sevenths, 1 seventh, there we go, times that vector, uh, 5 sevenths negative four sevenths, one seventh. Okay, and let me just move this down. This got a little bit more crowded than I had anticipated. So let's just move all that down so we can read it a little better. And that'll be U3. And so uh, here we just have to calculate, this is gonna end up being one negative one one. The dot products here are gonna be, uh, we're gonna have two over 14 times the vector one, two, three. So that's one seventh minus, uh, let's see, we're gonna have, this we'll need to calculate just a little bit more. We're gonna have five sevenths plus four sevenths plus one seventh. So it's 10 sevenths divided by, um, we're gonna have, let's see, 25 over 49 plus uh, 16 plus one. So 25 plus 16 plus one is uh, 42 over 49. So 42 over 49, that happens to simplify. So this is um, five sevenths, negative four sevenths and one seventh. Um, and so this is going to be 
uh, two fourteenths is one seventh, so we can just move that in. So it's one seventh, two sevenths, three sevenths. Minus, let's see, um, 42 over 49 is six sevenths. So let's cancel that, that's six sevenths. These sevenths cancel. Okay, so that seventh and that seventh cancels. 10 over six is five thirds. So it's gonna end up being all together, five thirds. And when you move that through the matrix, you're gonna end up with 15 over 21 uh, minus uh, 20 over 21 plus five over 21. And so finally, let's do, let's write everything as being over 21. because it looks like that'll be our least common denominator. I'm keeping the minuses here just so, uh, just to keep track of where those go. So this is uh, 21 over 21, negative 21 over 21, and 21 over 21. Uh, this will be 3 over 21, uh, 6 and over 21, and 9 over 21. And then these are the same, 15 over 21, negative 20, and 5 over 21. And so all together, this is going to end up being 21 minus 3 minus 15 is going to be 3 over 21. Okay, so that'll end up being 1 seventh. Uh, negative 21 minus 6 plus 20 uh, will be minus 7 over 21. Um, so that's minus 27 plus 20, so minus 7 over 21. Uh, and that'll end up being negative one third. And then finally, 21 minus nine minus five will be 12 minus five or seven over 21. So also one third. I wrote that in the wrong spot. So it's one third. Okay. And there's our vector V3. So this is V3. And let's just check that everything works out the way that we want. So Let's just check. Uh, I just want to, we've done a lot of work now. Let me, let's just kind of rewrite everything uh, in the right order. So our U1 is uh, 1, 2, 3. So U1 is the vector 1, 2, 3. U2 is the vector um, 5 sevenths, negative 4 sevenths, 1 seventh. So five sevenths, negative four sevenths, one seventh. Um, and then U3 is this vector. This should say U3, not V3. U3 is this vector, one seventh, negative one third, uh, one third. And so let's just check that this all uh, makes sense, that this all checks out. I'm slightly scared here, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, let's do, uh, let's do it. So we get, um, let's just check U1 dotted with U2. That's going to end up being five sevenths minus eight sevenths plus three sevenths. And that really is zero. So those are orthogonal. Uh, U1 and U3 are going to end up being one seventh minus two thirds plus one. So where did we go wrong? Something is astray here. Uh, and it turns out that my arithmetic is astray. So I apologize. Um, this is why I was slightly scared is that this one looked different. And indeed, the problem is that five times five is not 15. Even if I said it was, it's not, it's 25. And that will change this answer here. So that's 25 over 21. That makes me feel better because this is going to be, let's see, 21 minus three is 18, minus 25 is minus seven over 21. That's also minus one third. So that makes me feel better. That is why I like to double check these. I would encourage you to double check the same, um, negative one third. And so uh, let's try that again. So now I feel better about this. U1 dotted with U3 is going to end up being 
one times negative one third plus two times negative one third. So it's minus two thirds plus three times one third. It's three thirds. So that's gonna end up being zero, so that's good. And then finally, u2 times u3 um, is gonna end up being, let's see, this one will be a little bit more interesting because we'll have a little bit more arithmetic, uh, but we'll have five sevenths times negative one third. So it's gonna be negative five over 21 minus four sevenths times negative one third. That'll be plus four over 21 and then plus one seventh times one third is one over 21. Altogether, we really do end up with zero. So these are three mutually orthogonal vectors. Here's our orthogonal uh, basis that we've constructed from our original basis B. And then we have just one small step left. So once we have these vectors, you can take uh, each of these vectors and divide by its length. So let's compute the length. The length of U1 is gonna be the square root of the sums of the squares of the components. So you get one plus four plus nine, so it's 14. The length of U2 is gonna be the square root of uh, 25 over 49 plus 16 over 49 plus uh, one over 49. And that is the square root of 42 over 49, which I guess we already knew that because when we computed the dot products, uh, we ended up with this, uh, you can still kind of see it under here, 42 over 49. That was the length of that vector u2 squared. So when we take the square root, we get this length. So that's the square root of six. We might as well write it like this, square root of six over seven. And then the final vector length u3 is gonna end up being, um, we're gonna have negative one third times negative one third. So that's positive one ninth, negative one third times negative one third, and one third times one third. So that's gonna be one over the square root of three. And so our final step uh, to get our orthonormal basis, I always wanna say orthogonal, so I have to slow down and say orthonormal basis, uh, is we're gonna get E1 which is um, u1 divided by the length of u1. So that's gonna be, uh, there's not a nice way to write this, just one over square root of 14, two over square root of 14, three over square root of 14. It's literally that vector divided by square root of 14 in each component. Uh, e2 is gonna be the vector. Um, so u2 over its length, so it's five sevenths, negative four sevenths and one seventh. So we're gonna take this vector and we're gonna divide by this length. In other words, multiply by the uh, reciprocal. So it's gonna end up being five over square root of six. So five over square root of six, uh, negative four over square root of six and one over square root of six. And then E3 is gonna end up being this vector, uh, negative one over three, negative one over three, one third, that'll be um, divided by one over square root of three, in other words, multiplied by square root of three. And so that'll end up being uh, negative square root of three over three, negative square root of three over three, and square root of three over three. Okay, and there is our orthonormal basis. And again, just to check how this works, let's look at the length of E1. The length of E1 is gonna be the sum of the squares of the components. So you're gonna take the square root of, if you take one over square root of 14 and you square it, you're gonna end up with one over 14. If you take two over square root of 14 and square it, you're gonna end up with two squared over square root of 14 squared. So it's four over 14. And three over square root of 14 squared is gonna be nine over 14. So you're gonna end up with 14 over 14, take a square root, square root of one is one. And you really do end up with unit vectors for all of these. I'm not gonna do that process for the others, um, but that is how that is going to work. Okay, so everything there works out perfectly well. We have now our orthonormal basis from our generic set of vectors.